guys. I think this time we're up and running, finally. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, join us for this stream. We are going to be talking about the coronavirus. I'm sorry um, if you're tired of the subject, but hey, it's a pandemic. How often does that happen? Um, it's raining cats and dogs right now in Moscow. Uh, this morning it was code orange, where code red is like a hurricane. And I know that already one person died so uh, from a tree falling onto his vehicle. So that's what's happening in Moscow as we speak. Um, lots of stuff. Uh, the ruble fell, fell against the dollar and the euro this week, which is not great for us. I mean, obviously we're not economic specialists or anything like that, but um, this isn't the first time that this has happened and the way things usually go, it's not going to recover, um, not uh, fully at least. And um, this means that gradually prices are going to rise and this is going to include flights, obviously. So for all Russians who travel, this is not great. Um, and imagine like you still you get paid the same amount of money um in russian rubles but then you travel somewhere like london where it's a hundred against a ruble and everything's super expensive even more expensive than it used to be so that's not great um but given the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic right now i mean not many people are traveling so uh it's just more and more depressing isn't it uh and i think it's a conscious decision for all Russians to make to maybe postpone any traveling that they have to um, do. As of yet, Moscow is still open. It's a city of about 20 million and we have five airports in Moscow alone. Right now, um, only one is functioning. It's the Shremetyeva airport. And that's obviously done to monitor the situation. But Moscow isn't closed. To some countries, it is. It's illegal to fly into um, Russia to Moscow from certain countries but I will talk about that a little bit later because I have some stats and facts for you about the coronavirus and how Russians and how Muscovites are dealing with the issue uh, like literally this is the last time that we're streaming from this office because next week we're going to be working from home um, uh, yeah that's what's happening it's a little bit scary uh, but nonetheless, um, we'll get to that later. I do want to honor all of you and the comments that you left to our streams previously. But also, I realized that I forgot to apologize for being so late. There's a good reason for that. We were just filming uh, a segment that I think we're going to air next week or maybe the week after that. But that was so much fun and it was crazy. And there was so much preparation <laughs> that went into that that we went fully overboard and we're half an hour late, which is not fashionable and not graceful of us. So I do apologize that you had to wait. We will stay with you for a little bit longer um, than 4 p.m. Moscow time, so no worries. Um, we'll have enough uh, time to spend together. I'll get to your uh, comments. Thanks so much. You can see them coming in. I will get to those a little bit later on um, in the show today, and I, you're going to find out very soon why. So uh, let's talk about the comments that you left last week. Tsui Spirit um, commenting on the stream that we had about uh, female rights and the 8th of March and Women's Inter International Women's Day she says or he says um, if Russia's Women's Day does not symbolize feminism it's no one's place to criticize it it's a day when women are appreciated and that's all also noteworthy is that Russian men in general are gentlemen towards women in many Western countries men are generally impolite towards women the same countries where women have equal rights uh, I'm not arguing as to who is right or wrong, but every culture is proper yet imperfect in its own way. The world is always changing. To be honest, I haven't encountered um, impolite men in Western countries. Uh, that's not the impression that I've ever uh, come back with. Um, everyone's been actually really nice. And I definitely, definitely know that sometimes Russian men can be incredible assholes so that's also let's let's not generalize it's always down to the people thank you so much for the comment though it's, you know there's something to reflect upon sisyphus Vasilius. um why not both recognition for the roles women already play while recognizing and drawing attention to what progress is still required i totally agree i think combining the best of the best of both is the the healthier 
uh, approach towards this. It does sometimes feel like in order to draw attention to anything, to certain things, you kind of have to tip the, you know, you have to be grotesque and you have to go a little bit overboard and then things even out and balance themselves out, etc. Because if everything is nice and calm and um, who would want change? Uh, Dorites, happy Women's Days, ladies. A great start for gender equality in Russia should be equal retirement age. This is awfully skewed against men. It's barbaric. I can't think of another country that does this, and it surprises me why men put up with that <laughs> crap, especially because their life expectancy is lower. So formally, uh, it's 55 for women and 60 for men. Um, yeah, and now it's 60 for women and 65 for men. So men get to work five years longer than women do in Russia. Do you know what? I agree. Um, I think that I would definitely work another five years um, in order to secure equal pay, equal economic rights, equal social rights, etc. So like, I'd give that up to be equally accepted socially and in the workplace as men are. Like full on, not just on paper. <laughs> Um, Anna Bay thanks us in Russian and Anna you're welcome uh, thank you so much for your comment and for all of you out there thanks so much for your Russian comments obviously we understand them and that's fine but to make sure that we read them out uh, out loud please make sure that your comments are in English if you don't care for that you can choose wh whichever language you prefer that's totally fine by us it's okay um, Cody Bennett Spicyba Anna for the video. Thank you. Um, I enjoy your videos on subjects like this one. As someone whose girlfriend is Russian, I know that March 8th is a day that I should never forget. Could you please do more videos on holidays, history of famous people like Alexander Nevsky and of famous landmarks? I think it would be wonderful to know more about those. Again, Spicyba for all the hard work you put into these videos. Cody, thank you so much for your tips. Um, I actually wanted to talk to you about something because you are asked us previously to do more on music and we wanted to and we started looking into that and it turned out that it's incredibly tricky to do that on YouTube because you need to like obtain rights for um, the musical clips that you use etc so but we'll definitely get back to that as well because I mean I'm very into music and I'm interested in the subject and I think that there are some amazing um, mm, there's some amazing music that's coming out from Russia right now that's been here in the times that you know Russia was way more closed to well, to anyone basically to the west to the world and there are some great bands that I'd like to share with you but I wouldn't want to do it in a fashion where I'm just like naming names and asking you to then google them so we're working on that and I hope that we can come up with something decent at some point of time um the game left us a long and uh, interesting comment advising us on uh, how to structure our shows to make sure that they're a little bit more like Tim's and I think a little bit easier to comprehend and digest when you actually know what lies ahead and how you'll um, go about the show and I think that that's fair because I do tend to like ponder and jump from uh, story to story and it's just the way I create my own narrative I suppose always in life um, but I decided to use this opportunity to do a way more structured show so uh, I can see that you're already commenting and I'm excited about that but I'll get to that way um, closer towards the end of the show to your comments well as right now I want to go through um, the structure that has always existed, but it's been very difficult to follow it, I realize, because I do um, get distracted very easily by my own thoughts, which pretty much shows that I'm daft, which is great for someone who's streaming on YouTube. So right now we're working on some exciting stuff. Um, our March 8th video is obviously out. If you haven't seen it, I mean, watch it, please do it because it's it's fun. It's not nasty. If you're a man, you won't feel offended. <laughs> Be sure. And it really nails why International Women's Day is so different here in Russia from the rest of the world. It just like goes through the facts and history and um, it's fun to watch. 
And also Tim did a video on how to use the Moscow Metro, which is completely irrelevant now from one point. I mean, the Metro is open, but everyone's advised to stay away from public places in Moscow. But also, it's like your best opportunity to discover this um, underground gem of the Russian capital without actually leaving your couch. So um, check that one out on Tim's channel. Uh, it's very good. And to make sure that you do so, we wanted to give you the sneak preview of the video right now. Friends, if you're going to be visiting Moscow, that means you're probably going to be arriving on an airplane. And if you're arriving on an airplane in Moscow, that means you're probably going to be taking the Air Express train downtown to one of these lovely train stations like the one behind me. And once you get to the train station, well, you got to go further, don't you? So that's when you'll be using the Moscow subway system, also known as the Metro. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. Am I back? Ooh, yes, I am. I can't really see. <laughs> there's a monitor over there where I should be uh, able to see myself, but I can't because there's a lamp in front of it. So I'm like, what is that? It's nice lighting. It's like I'm on a on a beach. Um, anyway, I can't resist and read your comments a little bit. JW11 says, make a playlist on Spotify, Anna, which is so genius. That's exactly what we should do. We should make short little playlists, advertise them here, and make sure that you have access to that kind of music and stream it legally and not... Um, perfect, thank you so much, Spasiba. I mean, great. <laughs> That's exactly what we should do. Um, with Russia Beyond the website, which is rbth.com, uh, we have two very popular articles which both tend to do something with... Um, tyranny, history, and suffering, which is totally okay, because everyone has their own coping mechanisms, right? Okay, so one of them is, why did Napoleon invade Russia? Yeah, there it is, just there. Um, so Napoleon's invasion of Russia was his biggest and deadliest campaign, uh, but it also put an end to his army and consequently his reign. Um, yeah, and we state four reasons why Bonaparte attacked the Russian Empire in the first place in this article, so you can check that out. And the other one is um, even more terrifying. It's about Saltichiha, and she was the most evil woman in Russian history because it's believed that she tortured to death over a hundred of her own serfs, um, and the majority of those were young women. So uh, if you've ever seen the American Horror Story, there is an episode of a lady who is basically modeled on Saltichiha, a terrifying lady. Um, and yeah, that's what's, uh, that's what's going on with what's happening on the website right now. I just told you that our office is going to start working from home on Monday because that's um, where the coronavirus is taking Muscovites these days. And I just wanted to tell you about how the city's coping, um, what truth and lies, what's been terribly exaggerated, like people going to jail for not admitting that they've traveled, and what's actually a little bit, well, did I say a little bit? No, I meant what's actually worrying um, when it comes to the COVID-19. So it's a pandemic, which means that it's hitting Russia as well and Moscow. Um, although the official stats are pretty low um, compared to those glo to the global ones, there are at least 28 registered patients in Russia, including two, no, including six new ones that were added in the last 24 hours. Um, four of them in Moscow alone, and uh, as of now, Moscow is on high alert status, which means that. Uh, large events where like more than 5,000 people could attend those are all banned and uh, people are encouraged to stay at home and employers are encouraged to ask their employees to stay at home. No one is obliged to do that as of yet. Shops are open, theatres are open, cinemas are open, everything is still open but that might, ch might change within just a few days. It's the way things, well, it's the way things have been... Um, going elsewhere like suddenly today what Belgium's closed as well um it's crazy uh and yeah so 
store shelves are full. There's no visible stock panic yet, but I think that could also uh, be linked to the fact that Muscovites are very used to buying their groceries online. So people have been stocking up, but you can't really track that yet by just going into the deli. Um, one of the like very, I suppose, very Russian ways of taking in um, worrying information like this, like a pandemic, would be uh, immediately turning to conspiracy theories. Now, these are spreading as fast as the virus in Russia. Uh, so some of them include the fact that uh, COVID-19 is a chemical weapon, that the virus spreads through mosquito bites, that a vaccine already exists, uh, uh, that and a recent one, yeah, a recent one is that this virus was designed to wipe out Italy's aging population to boost the country's economy, um, which doesn't make any sense because the country is on a lockdown and will probably face an economic recession. So I don't think that would help at all. Um, on a, you know, the good news is that there is also sanity. So, for example, the Moscow's official website has a completely comprehensive like coronavirus information guide um, with all the latest developments, numbers, popular questions answered. And I just wanted to go in and um, read out some of them to you. So, for example, I came from Italy. I feel good. What will happen if you do not observe the regime of self-isolation? So people that come from um, the travel to Moscow from... Uh, high alert um, regions like Italy, um, by law, are meant to stay at home for two weeks for the quarantine period. So here's the answer. By the decree of the government of the Russian Federation, um, yeah, coronavirus uh, is included into the list of diseases that pose danger to others. So, violation of this law entails liability, including criminal liability, which means whenever it's a criminal liability, that always equals imprisonment up to five years. Uh, and this has been misinterpreted already by the media, saying that Russia is jailing people for traveling to um, risk, high risk regions. That's not true. But because this does state criminal liability that could possibly happen. Compliance with the regime is monitored by video surveillance. In case of violation of the regime, a citizen will be accommodated in the observatory. So just recently there was this news um, that came through that a Duma deputy failed to register when he came back from uh, a trip to a high-risk area. And he's in big trouble. He might lose his position, and he's been forced to um, leave his uh, yeah leave his his job and sent into quarantine uh, already. Where can I get a coronavirus test? Well, nowhere. <laughs> um, Self -analysis, analysis is not provided, uh, and people that are subject to inspection are only those who arrived over the past fourteen days from countries with an unfavorable epidemiological situation, China, Korea, Iran, now Italy as well. Uh, persons with signs of acute respiratory viral infections who arrived from countries where cases of the disease were recorded and persons in contact with someone who is deceased uh, with a deceased coronavirus infection. So the way things go right now, uh, you basically have to call an ambulance in. They will come over and you say that, well, yada, yada, this is happening. And then uh, the scenario unrolls two ways. They take you away to an infection hospital that has always existed in Russia or to this new uh, huge hospital which was just built and it was especially handed over to people with coronavirus just for now. And the worrying thing is that that's just like an enormous space, but they're also building another one on the outskirts of Moscow, which means that Moscow is getting ready for numbers to grow. Um, yeah, so questions are always like, if I'm isolated, should my family members who have not visited dangerous countries also stay at home? Which hospitals will potentially uh, infected patients be assigned to? Why is the border uh, on entry and exit to Russia not closed? What preventive measures are introduced in schools? Schools are still open. 
um, except I know that kids are, yeah, uh, mm, their temperatures are monitored daily. So every day um, someone takes uh, all of the pupils and kindergarten kids' temperature to see how that goes. Um, but again, that might very quickly change, which is terrifying. So yeah, this was um, this was something that I just discovered earlier today, and I found this website very helpful. It literally has everything you need to know. It says, "Don't panic." Um, hang on, it's obviously all, all in Russian. So yeah, Moscow prudently introduces enhanced preventive measures to control the spread of coronavirus infections. Um, it warns from people who are trying to hype the um, panic up. Uh, in social media, etc. Uh, and it says that there are no uh, drugs available as of yet. So if someone tries to sell you any drugs from coronavirus, that that's a scam. Mm, uh, they even mentioned that messengers like uh, WhatsApp or any um, anything else like Telegram uh, have been spreading false information in order to create panic. And... Yeah, trust only official sources, la la la. But there there have been some very decent media reports already that I think people can definitely trust and turn to in moments of confusion. I, yeah. So let me have a look at your recent comments coming in to see whether or not I can give you some answers. People are saying hello, 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 Maitre, hello, Patricia Bennett. Um, yeah, it's really lovely to see all of you as well. Please let me know how are things um, your end as well, because I'd be very interested uh, to hear your perspective. Some of my friends in Europe mm, have been sending me photographs and information about how it's difficult to get produce, etc. But that's obviously due to the fact that everyone's been um, hype buying uh, and stores haven't been stocking up enough uh, uh, for us to nervously uh, buy too much food, um, which is a coping mechanism as well, because it's like us trying to control a situation that is impossible to control. So you're trying to do at least something to, to calm yourself down. And I mean, that's where the three kilo rice bags come in. Um, greetings from India. Hello to you in India as well. Greetings from West Coast of America. Good morning. Good morning, John Smith. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm a little bit tired because he, well, John Smith says that I'm looking good today. I feel good, which is already an accomplishment these days. And I, I'm a little bit tired. Yeah, because we've been filming since morning today. Uh, also, yes. Hi from Poland. Polski Honor. Hello, Poland. It's like one of the last trips I took was to Poland and I loved it so much. Krakow. Oh, just perfect. Um, Patricia Bennett. I agree. Everyone all over the world have good people and unkind people. That's tr that's just the way it is, isn't it? Um, and somehow uh, it's the unkindness that always stands out. So you forget about all of the good people there. And you're just like, you've been nasty to me in Thailand. I bet everyone's nasty in Thailand. They're not. Thailand is amazing. Uh, will I ever see it again? Uh, JY Joyce. Hi, I'm a uni student majoring Russian in Korea and your video on Russian feminists helped... Help... <laughs> your video on Russian feminism helped me get a better understanding on Russia. So thanks. Well, thank you so much for watching and appreciating how you're doing in Korea. Because, um, yeah, you've got some scary numbers of people who've been ill, but also fantastic numbers of people who have recovered. So well done, Korea. Uh, Maitre Photographia, excited about the music project. Thank you. I'm excited as well. I'm actually really looking forward to that. That might be my assignment um, for next week because I'll be streaming from home next Friday. Okay. Uh, the 8D experience. My state has multiple cases of coronavirus. The country over to the county, ah, uh, the county, sorry, the county over to mine. My school announced that they will keep going until it reaches us, but then it will be too late. Um, don't worry and don't panic. Coronavirus 
on its own, if you get ill, is a bit like a flu. So you get ill and then you recover. It's extremely dangerous for people who are a little bit older, okay? I think older than 50, everyone says, because that's when they develop pneumonia and it's very difficult to treat. Um, so don't worry about the virus per se. Be a little bit wary of where the economy is heading these days. But otherwise, just like stay safe, stay put. And I have a few tips for you guys a little bit later. I'll get back to that. Uh, Alwyn Nell, Privet from South Africa. Good to see team content included. Of course, Tim and I, we're like buddies. Uh, does Russia have Spotify? Russia does not have Spotify officially. There are ways, though, my children, to work around these internet boundaries and securities, which I will not tell you about because I am law abiding. Um, James A. Hello. Finally caught you live. Yes. It's what, how, what time is it where you are and where are you from? <laughs> um, Alwyn Nell, by the way, cool shirt. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it really works well with the red behind me. Aijan, my producer and director, texted me this morning and said that I will have a red background. And I thought, well, hey, I'm an artist. I studied arts. I know colors. Blue will suit it best. Ta-da. Um, X Nop says that Moscow Times says 35 cases now potentially could be true I can't google it right now because I'm talking to you guys but I know that the official numbers were 28 this morning so um, we'll have to check JW11 Russia had such a small percentage of cases, it's quite impressive. And now that every country is closing borders, I think it will subside in two months at least. My hope is that that's exactly what's going to happen. But also with Russia, I'm not always sure that the stats are correct. Um, because right now, the official stance is that if you're not feeling well, self-isolate. Don't put too much pressure on the medical system. Don't put too much pressure on the healthcare system. If you're kind of doing okay, just stay at home. So this means that there are a lot of cases that go unnoticed and they're not recorded and we just don't know about them. So keep that in mind. Alwyn Nell. Uh, ooh, do an episode about uh, Nazinski Island. Gotcha, will do. And if it won't be us, it will be Tim. Uh, Rackland, Rome, ban Americans. So why? I think this is one of those times where we shouldn't let any nationalism hinder our focus on the fact that this is just one big planet and we're all the same and we're in this all together. So, no way. Uh, James A. Qatar jumped from 3040 uh, to 250 a couple of days ago thanks to labor camps i'm not sure i understand what's going on um no damien anna what's the best russian restaurant in sydney i have no clue i haven't been to sydney for what nearly 30 years <laughs> i don't know if you find out let me know um <laughs> uh yeah, sweetly, I live upstate New York. Schools are closed for two weeks. Yeah, New York has been um, clo pretty much closed down. I forgot what the what what it's called. It's like Chisvichena um, Blazhena. How do you translate that? Emergency. Okay, yeah, New York. New York is in a state of emergency, so that's why it's happening there um, right now. That was Gleb, my boss. It's good to have a boss who's smarter than you. Always, always make sure you do that in life, children. Yes. Um, okay, well, I'll get to your comments a little bit later and we'll um, keep the discussion. Actually, no, I'm going to stay here because there's so much coming in. Uh, protect your beloved elders. They're the most vulnerable, Mikhail Rashkov. Yes, exactly. Uh, Vituzzo Alberti in Italy stores are full. They were empty only one day. That's good to know. And my heart goes out to Italy. I know you guys are not, you know, it's not easy for you at the moment and I just hope that you recover well and everything's okay. And I saw um, a heartwarming video uh, of an older Italian lady speaking to the youth and um, uh, Lavo il mani, she says, wash your hands, wash your hands. And it's very sweet. Um, John Smith, hello from California. Oh, you lucky person. California is bliss. Um, Farah Bel Bagaria. 
just singing your name because it's beautiful. Uh, well, I have a fun story for you guys. Well, our university told us if you want to come to Dean office only, the foreign students should come with a mask. In Russia. So only foreigners had to wear a mask. Again, that's like nationalism, isn't it? That's terrible. Uh, working from home. Yeah. Was that a Gendel fax? I had, I don't know. Um... So yeah, uh, Ivan C says that in New York, uh, many events with over 200 people have been cancelled. That's because you're in a state of emergency and Moscow isn't. Moscow is in what is called a state of high alert. That's before you get into a state of emergency. That's a different thing. And what this also means is that um, schools are open, people go to work. Um, everyone's sort of urged to wash their hands and use sanitizer and avoid handshakes. Um, stay at home if you have flu-like uh, symptoms. Sanitizers and face masks are, I think, the only uh, things that you will probably find, you'll probably experience some sort of difficulty to find. You can still find them, but sometimes you'd walk into a pharmacy. And, you know, Moscow is, like, incredible. There's like, five pharmacies on one tiny street because there are so many of them. And they might um, not have those. Um, yeah, so people aren't panicking yet. There is fear, I suppose. Like, we walked into the office, and this morning, because it's Friday, yeah, we found out that next Monday we won't have to be here. And it's not like we're running away and, I don't know, using sanitizer and drinking sanitizer and just, like... Um, trying to isolate ourselves, etc. But you could tell how everyone went from cheerful and bubbly to, oh, this is real. And this is, I think, the general state of Moscow right now. Oh, this is happening. It's real. And this newly built hospital, for those that are in a quarantine, the fact that they're building another one, it's all signaling the fact that we're not sure whether or not our healthcare system is fully prepared. And this is going to hit hard the most vulnerable um, of us, people who already need medical attention, um, even if they don't have a virus, okay? So they, they will probably face certain problems getting the attention that they need. Um, for that same reason, healthy people are urged not to uh, put pressure on the medical system. And that's why... Uh, certain cases are not being registered. Again, just a thought, but this virus is pretty much deadly for those who have a low immune system. And Russia is in the middle of a, an HIV epidemic, which means that there are so many people here whose health uh, might not be on par um, to fight the virus off very easily again do the math just thinking about these kinds of things um a beautiful thing i found online today is like a list of healthy coping mechanisms so when everyone is a little bit down and you can you can tell you feel that when you encounter people you can see that on social media everyone's just a little bit scared and there's a reason for it you know the last pandemic that we saw was in the 60s i wasn't alive so 10 healthy mechanisms to cope with fear and stress. One, first off, accept your feelings. And that's sometimes the most difficult thing to do, to actually say, well, do you know what? I am a little bit scared and I am stressed and this is scary. Number two, reestablish your usual routines if you can. Obviously, if you're staying at home and you can't go out anywhere, it's very difficult, but then think of the things that you like doing. Do you like sports? Maybe you can do some um, physical activity at home to make just to make sure that you know your your body is getting the uh, nourishment that it needs, etc. Just little things. Um, three, create a mental safe place. This is so difficult, but call a friend, call someone you love, talk to your loved ones, and that would definitely create a, a bit of a safe space for you find self-compassion this is so difficult for overachievers because we're usually like oh no i'm just going to kill myself and work myself into a state of frenzy and then just like try and achieve things instead of um being kinder to ourselves and and accepting 
our faults and fears and this whole situation basically uh seek support and connection again don't worry about it instead of trying to come across as someone who's like superhuman and can take in all of this terrifying information without feeling anything be honest um reach out to a friend laugh about it i don't know uh turn to the positive which in this case is statistics yes there are thousands of people who are dead but there are much more people who have recovered and that's those numbers i always find reassuring um recommit to your most important values if you're religious pray if you're not read philosophy go back to the basics just purify your souls in any means possible um feel gratitude like be thankful for the little things that was me that just recently because i was feeling down i was working from home all week and most of the time i won't lie to you and i i'm not proud but i was just like sitting in a state of fear just staring into the wall because i wasn't sure what was going on and how should i react and should i bulk buy food or should i get medicine or should i try and get my loved ones out of the city into the country i didn't know and that really hindered my um daily routine up to the point where i realized well hang on a minute uh i can just like continue to do things and try and be a little bit more grateful that all of this is only happening in my head right now i'm not actually i don't actually need to do anything everyone i know isn't ill and i'm grateful for that and just like reminding yourself um and obviously do something constructive that could be anything clean your wardrobe out if you're at home um, buy that buckwheat if you want to you know if you're so you you'll be able to eat it within a year um anyway so yeah buy the rice and buckwheat why not buy the grain uh that said there are less graceful coping mechanisms and we've been spotting them online already memes yes russians have been um creating little memes about uh the coronavirus and some of them i even laughed at like a week ago now suddenly these things aren't funny anymore so number 1 If you can't see the virus, the virus can't see you. That I don't find funny anymore at all. This other one is terribly politically incorrect. Um when Xi Jinping sneezes, have a look at this one. No go zone again. Um another one, here's your package from China. Um and the last one is the only one I find funny and I still do. There is a cure for coronavirus. but scientists can't open it. Now this what you see right now, we all know it from the Soviet times. It's a, I think it's from Vietnam. It's basically like this bomb that is very stingy. Uh we use it when you have like uh a running nose or headache. It's like tiger bomb, but it's virtually impossible to open it. It's so difficult. I remember this from from childhood and even now if you can find it, you can open it when it's new and then it kind of just like if a little piece of it gets stuck in between the the metal folds, it's a gonna you can't you can't open it. So that was the only one that I found somewhat funny. <coughs> I also want to cough all the time which is counterproductive and terrifies me. Let's get back to your comments. Um Humor and says привет от Рене и Евгении в Хабаровске. Hello from Rene and Evgenia in Khabarovsk. Hello to you too. Also, if you're from Russian cities which are not Moscow, let me know how you guys are doing. Also interesting. Uh JY Joyce says that I feel that coronavirus in Korea is starting to calm down a bit. I mean, in Korea we have classes via internet until April and major events are postponed. Yeah, I think that's where we're all headed these days. Um Alexander Lee, uh Bolsonaro tests positive, Trudeau's wife tests positive, Czech Republic closes all borders, rumors of corona at Mgimo and lots of students are sick, yet no one seems to care. Um I don't think that anyone seems to care. I think that a lot is being done at the moment to tackle the issue, but 
and not to spread panic as well, but I do feel that when you compare the numbers, 28 cases just sounds unrealistic. Uh, Jeremy Manuel, out toilet paper ran uh, paper in NC ran out in stores last night. Uh, they sent back all the toilet paper from China. Is what I was told. Uh, is there any shortage of goods in Russia because of the coronavirus? Not yet. So far, it's hand sanitizer and masks. You will find difficulty finding them, but you will find them. And that's in Moscow. And as I said, all of the shelves are full. Uh, stores are all full. You don't see things like in Europe, for example, or New York. I did buy additional toilet paper. But I said this previously. Maybe if you joined us a little bit later, I'll say it again. This might be due to the fact that Russians are used to buying online. So you buy all your groceries online. This nice person delivers them right to your flat um, with like barely any additional cost to it. It's cheap and it's very efficient. And people do it without any pandemics, epidemics, um, high alert situations, etc. It's just the way things are done here. So uh, probably all of this produce is leaving the shelves of huge storage spaces and we can't really see how it's numbers are shrinking um patricia bennett best to be strong and focused try to get everything in perspective and do take precautions wishing the best for everyone and i stand by those words i couldn't have said it better myself and i think that's exactly what we should do we should think about other people um and be compassionate not be nationalistic and make sure that i don't know i don't know make sure that i don't know because that's exactly what's going on. I've been, I used to always tell this to my students in uni uh, that these days our only big asset, the only thing that we should teach ourselves and learn how to live, create, work and be inspired and stay alive is to be flexible. And this is the time where everyone, uh, the whole planet right now needs to be flexible and to adjust to these new circumstances that we're living in currently and to be honest I think everyone's doing a pretty good job um, so let's take a minute to thank ourselves and to think how amazing we're doing um, hello from Novosibirsk hello Novosibirsk Gold star bomb. Yeah. Uh, live Russian. Here in France, people went crazy after yesterday's president's speech. The stores are full of people preparing to stay at home for months. Oh, boy. Uh, when I think about French people who want to stay at home for months, I know that they'll be buying a lot of food. It's one country that appreciates food, right? Uh, Yelena Kuzmitska. I think that there's no panic in small towns, only in big ones. In my town, nobody cares about coronavirus. We are more concerned about whooping cough outbreak. Again, a thing. And it's terrible. Um, because if you think about the coronavirus as something that is symptomatic as flu, the whooping cough is a whole different story. That's way worse. Um, Yelena, if you could tell us which town you're from, that would be really cool. Karomen TV, I was afraid to go to work today, so I called sick. I'm also afraid to not find a nice and good girlfriend. Stay safe, everyone. Much love from Montreal, Canada. Um, much love to Montreal, Canada, and to your... Um, Trudeau. Who's Trudeau? He's a prime minister, right? Yes. And to, to his wife. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. Um... Okay, so some some facts I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you something which I'm not very keen on. The video about the prank. Do we still have that? So this dude, uh, before things like got really serious and people understood what was going on, I think that's when it happened because he apologized later. Uh, this guy, um, whose surname is Jaborov, ran into a um, metro carriage and pretended that he had coronavirus and we have a video of that and that was just very bad. Anyway, he got arrested for it um, and then he was let go, but still, 
he's also very sorry that he did it. And I think that's not the way we should, like, that's not the kind of sense of humor that will save us. Definitely not this, but have a look at it. Что у нас есть? А, ah, hello. This is me speaking Russian with my crew. Ha-ha. Uh, a little bit. Елена Кузьмицкая says that she's from Smolensk. Thanks. So Smolensk is not that small, by the way. <laughs> but thank you so much for um, uh, the, yeah, the information. Sorry, it's just like going through a comment just now. Uh, Mr. Raccoon says that shutting down borders is not nationalistic. Prevention is better than a cure. What are you on about? I never said anything about shutting borders. I think shutting borders is um, trying to prevent stopping the cure. I think nationalism is the memes that we showed, like when China is to blame and people are laughing at Chinese people and these kind of, that's nationalism, that's wrong. That shouldn't be happening. Um, also asking only foreign students to wear masks and not asking anyone else to do that, that's nationalistic. That's what I was talking about. Mr. Raccoon. Uh, Live Russian. Agreed on shutting down borders. There's no way people want to stay healthy and not offend anyone by letting everyone enter the country. Um, yeah, I guess you guys are talking to each other, but you've heard me. You know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> the ruble has crashed a bit versus the dollar because of the coronavirus. Uh, not just because of it. There's something else involved, but also the virus. Yes. Um, soy boy, Justice Wannabe. Pretty odd Russia has been awfully quiet about the virus. Why is that? Um, it hasn't, to be honest. Uh, every day when I start the morning and I check any kind of news outlet, be it in Russian or English, all of the top news is about the virus. So, of course, it's a huge issue here. There's an amazing video that was shot by uh, Artur Sokolov and Anton Krasovsky. It's in Russian, but if you can find it, and if you know Russian, please check it out, because it's like an encyclopedia of everything that's going on right now. It explains so well why here in Russia the virus is pretty much lethal for the older generation, like how they develop pneumonia and how there's, by that stage, there's no going back, like there's no chance that the person will recover. Um, how it's difficult for kids to, um, to catch the virus because the healthier and the younger you are, it seems the more difficult it is for the virus to penetrate the cell. So um, that's all in that video and they're way, they're so much better at explaining it because he's actually talking to doctors and to people who know what they're talking about than me. So I'm trying to steer away from the um, scientific facts and figures and make sure that you know what it feels like for the average Joe um, right now in Moscow. I would probably say that I think people are a little bit too relaxed at the moment and the video that I just told you about by Krasovsky, he interviews a guy um, from China who describes how the outbreak just happened in one day. Like they were out and about with their friends, just having a nice time and they wanted to see each other the next day. And then suddenly one of his friends calls him and says, well, this can't happen because the metro is shut down. And that could virtually happen here as well. 20 million people living in Moscow and just shutting down the metro would mean that that's it. It's like a standstill for the city um, in many ways. Aksana Uspianska, we planned a trip to Belgium about six months ago and not going to cancel it unless all of the flights will be cancelled. Actually, are more afraid for our seniors. Um, well, Belgium's now closed, so I don't think that's going to happen. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 
Elwoke, buy potatoes, easy to harvest for multiple generations. We Dutch have a famous painting, the potato eaters for a reason. <laughs> I know that painting. It's very good. I also love potatoes. I bought potatoes. Um, there are lists that are circulating the internet right now on how to stock up for at least two weeks. I think one of them was published officially by the state of New York. Um, uh, which is an emergency state right now. But also, that's a preventive measure. It's not because there are so many people who are sick in New York at the moment. It's because they're trying to make sure that that number won't grow. And it's important to understand that, that it's a different situation from, say, Italy. Um, Mikhail Rashkov, but the virus causes caused some economic stall and thus the oil demand drops somewhat, dropping the prices. It's all a very difficult and complicated issue. Like there's Saudi Arabia and Russia with the oil issue, and that's happening simultaneously to what's happening with the virus, simultaneously to what's happening with the stock market and the American stock market. And it's basically like you don't have to be a genius. or Slump all of that together where going to be in a situation where everything's going to be more expensive very soon. So um, no surprises. Um, okay, this is a good question, Maitre. I'm curious, what's the plant behind you, Anna? Is it a succulent, a real one? Yes, all of them are succulents and they're real. And this one, I just forgot its name. I remembered um, earlier. We used them for the video that we shot uh that's coming out is it coming out next week Aishan? maybe the week after next week we can't predict anything these days but yeah um it will involve succulents they are great for russia because they don't care about sunlight and they're fine if you don't water them so they're very happy in our dry winters um I have one of Zemiakulkus, this one is called, because <laughs> I have like tons of these and they grow so well that I eat mine even flowers. It has a really, really intense flower, which is also green. Um, yeah, they're real. They're real. I love flowers. Um, you will also soon find out that I have a windowsill garden, <laughs> which is like I'm such a geek where I grow um herbs and um what are they called uh they're like like tiny little tangerines calamandine calamandine they're called and i make jam out of those like i'm the worst i'm literally i could stay at home forever and just never leave um we'll see if that's going to happen in my reality uh jeremy manuel how long do you think it will be before they put a cure on the Russian market? Do you think it will be available in the next two years? Well, I'm no, no specialist. Um, so to be honest, I don't know. It's just that in my, um, I remember when the dollar was what, 24 rubles? Uh, and it's never going back to that number, is it? So it's been gradually creeping up and sometimes not, not as gradually as we'd like, uh, like in the recent days. But I feel like it's not going to recover because it never does. So we'll see. Uh, Maitre, awesome, awesome. I'm excited about the succulent video and the Spotify project. Well, that's fantastic. It's not a video that's entirely dedicated to succulents. It's like it features succulent plants, but it's about flowers in general. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting. That's what we've been filming. Um, I started coughing really severely because I got allergic to one of the plants and like literally, I kid you not, one of the cameramen who was here earlier, who's like, I'm not coming near her. I'm leaving. So that's the reality we live in these days. Um, guys, last chance for your comments, because I think we're going to uh, we're going to vacate the studio pretty soon. Again, I am very sorry that we started later, but it was for a good cause because it involved these babies. Uh, Maitre, I have a big garden as well and a good amount of succulents in my collection. I wish I could show them to you. We would absolutely love that. Why don't you use our uh, corporate email to send us some photos? Because believe it or not, we're actually quite a small um, newsroom. So if you send us some of those photographs, we'll definitely uh, be able to see those. I think we're Russia Beyond at Russia Beyond. <laughs> What's our corporate email? Just going to quickly find out and let you know. 
Uh, oh, it's already in the comment section. So that's for all of you to use if you want to send us some photos and like keep in touch, etc. And maybe we can feature those later on in streams as well. That would be fun. I'd love to do that. Um, Justin Monroe had a trip planned to Moscow as part of a study program through my university, but my school shut down all travel to anywhere. Yeah, I understand you. My office shut down all travel to anywhere. South by Southwest was cancelled. Coachella is postponed. Um, the Venice Biennale is postponed. So like uh these are exactly the kind of this new reality that we just really rapidly need to adjust to and to uh take it all in rather than rigidly trying to push away all of this and like say no this isn't happening i really wanted to go take a deep breath take it in you're not coming to russia hopefully you'll may manage it next year um possibly and let's just all stay safe, wash our hands, use sanitizers. We're meant to not touch our face, which is completely impossible for me because I always touch my face. Um, and yeah, just be kind, be kind to people around you and be kind to people on the internet. And remember that even if we do turn to a good old meme or to a prank or like joke about it to try and relieve our stress, people are dying. So this is all, um, this is all happening and it's all important. Don't panic and stay healthy. And I'll see you next week, I think, from my home, which will be interesting, at least. Maybe I can walk around and do a little tour um, if you'd want that. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for participating and thank you for all of your comments and stay safe. Bye bye.